Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for July 19th, 2022, around 1230 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including multiple tropical cyclone threats in the East Pacific and ongoing severe weather across portions of the Northwest and Midwest United States, and when the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season will begin to ramp up. So let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that it is pretty quiet across the basin right now, as we would expect for the month of July. We do have a couple of tropical waves in the intertropical convergence zone off the coast of Africa. Not really much expected out of that. And we will be watching up towards the Midwest United States, including portions of Wisconsin and Minnesota today for the potential of some pretty substantial severe weather up there. We'll talk about that here in a minute. In the East Pacific Basin, we have Tropical Storm Estelle. This was a hurricane yesterday, but has now weakened back to a tropical storm. This was expected to become a major hurricane, but it has since failed to do so. And one of the main reasons for that is because at this point, we can notice that there is some pretty strong shear ongoing across the storm right now. In fact, actually you can see that there is a bit of an exposed low level circulation if we kind of zoom in here and kind of take a look at all of that, we notice that the low level circulation is actually right about here. And all of the convective activity is generally off towards the east. And what this is implying is that there is some pretty strong shear uh, basically coming out of the west and northwest, basically focusing all of the convective activity on the eastern side of the circulation. And then we can also tell that we have these cumuliform clouds over here and stratus clouds and this indicates that we have some pretty cold air this is a marine layer and the storm is basically heading into this area so if we actually look at the nhc forecast we notice that again the wind field has expanded but overall the storm has now decreased in intensity and is expected to become a remnant circulation here by thursday morning this is uh, actually on the evening of thursday so about uh, 8 p.m thursday this is going to become a remnant circulation and then this will dissipate in the cooler waters of the tropical Pacific. And then we'll be turning our attention back into far portions of the East Pacific where yet another system may develop, but this also has a low potential of development as this generally heads towards the West and Northwest over the next couple of days. One of the main factors going against development out of this would be some pretty strong upper level winds here as a result of some of the outflow created by Estelle, so that will be something to kind of keep in mind over the next couple of days. So focusing on the ongoing severe weather across portions of the Northwest United States, we do have a slight risk for severe storms today, generally from about uh, just to the Northeast of Minneapolis, Minnesota. So this includes like Duluth and places along with that. And this also goes to include Green Bay, Wisconsin, and just to the east of Grand Folks and or Grand Forks. So we'll be kind of watching this situation today. Now, if we actually take a look at the overall severe weather parameters, we notice that there is a little bit of a tornado threat today. Again, similar to yesterday, what we saw across portions of North Dakota and Montana, we'll have another uh, QLCS, a squall line of storms kind of develop and propagate through this area. Now, generally speaking, there is a wind and hail threat. Those are the two greatest threats that we'll be watching for over the next couple of hours. So let's kind of take a look at everything, shall we? So let's go ahead and plop on the, uh, the CONUS here sector. And we noticed that what we got going on on the satellite imagery today is that we actually do have, again, some pretty widespread cloud cover across this area, but there is ongoing warming. And we're going to take a look here at these METARs. And look at our dew points. We noticed that dew points are actually very warm for this time of the year. We have dew points in the upper 60s and low 70s across this entire area. So that means there is a plethora of moisture around. And some of these 10 meter winds as well are generally suggesting that we have dew southerly flow affecting across this area. Again, we can kind of see that uh, from yesterday's kind of storms, we have more so of an, kind of an east-west flow and there were west to east flow and that would generally kind of be spiraling around and so there could be some enhanced tornado potential in there as we progress throughout the remainder of the day if we should kind of take a look here at some of the model forecasts this is the h triple r and we'll take a look at the simulated reflectivity here so 
We notice that right now there's not really much going on. There is an upper level low pressure system right now over Canada that is moving off towards the east. We notice that all the convective activity is stretched along the warm front right now. So we'll kind of suggest what is going to happen here. So this is the HRRR. We'll continue to move this forward in time. We'll actually have to go back a model run. Uh, but basically what we're able to notice is that these storms do develop and they are in more of a squall line fashion. So they will be linear, but there could be a few isolated, more discrete or semi-discrete cells, especially with storms developing on the tail end. And as we were talking about with that rapid advecting moisture with dew points that clearly support surface-based thunderstorms, it seems no doubt that we will definitely see the potential for a few isolated tornadoes and that will continue through the Duluth, Minnesota area and then eventually make its way into Wisconsin where eventually it looks like here on the HRRR that begins to weaken and the upper level low dives towards the southeast and goes right over Duluth. Now let's take a look at some of the parameters for today again. The uh, STP values are going to be there. The storm relative helicity, zero to three kilometer SRH is certainly there. Again, some of the values indicating over 500 meters per second squared, uh, meter squared per second squared. So this basically goes to indicate that there's going to be some pretty favorable motions in the upper levels for tornadoes today. So it definitely would not rule out a few tornadoes. Instability values will be a bit limited today. Again, not, uh, not significantly high, but some... Uh, will be residing around in this area and certainly could provide for some thunderstorms and certainly some severe weather potential with that. So we'll kind of have to keep that in mind. Now, focusing on the remainder of the tropics and what to expect for the remainder of the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season, a good place to start here is the European Ensemble forecast. This is looking at the 200 millibar velocity potential anomalies and what we're looking at is rising and sinking air within the atmosphere. So this goes out officially all the way through about September 1st of 2022. Now, again, as we see, this is July 21st. And so if you go down here, this goes down in time and you can see where all of these values correspond uh, to within the world. So generally speaking, we actually have anomalous sinking air that will be setting up across the East Pacific Basin for the next while. It basically seems like after we get through about uh, the 21st of July or so, we probably will have more sinking air over the East Pacific Basin. And then generally speaking, look at where the rising anomalies are. They're generally centered over the Indian Ocean and Africa. Now, one of the things that is sort of interesting with all of this is the propagation and how this kind of handles the propagation of the Madden-Julian oscillation and the Kelvin waves, which are basically just a, a faster version of the Madden-Julian oscillation. We notice here that on the European ensembles uh, in particular, we don't necessarily get a standing wave to develop, meaning that we don't necessarily have a sinking or rising branch staying over one location for several months. And you can actually kind of see that because some of these um, suppressed air anomalies do propagate eastward with time. And so it does maybe go to suggest that we will be dominated a little bit this year by interseasonal variability and not so much the Madden Julian oscillation. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because that happened in 2017. But basically, in that particular scenario, we get bursts of activity and not just one continuous activity, um, you know, sprout, basically. So it is going to be something that we're going to have to monitor. Some of the controls of the European uh, ensembles were having a more unfavorable look and some were more favorable. So this is basically just a mean of all of those certain control members, and it does look pretty favorable for the Atlantic Basin overall. Now, one of the things within the GFS forecast, this is the very long range GFS, and we're looking at the MSLP anomalies. Now, generally speaking, there is going to be discrepancies on the GFS versus Euro because the GFS handles the Madden Julian oscillation differently than the European, and it's a lot of complex physics and dynamics and mathematical equations that we're just not going to get into. 
but basically the GFS does sort of agree that we will have lower than average pressures across the tropical Atlantic over the next couple of weeks. This is going into the next about five days. That pattern sets up at least through about the 30th of July, and then it sort of tries to reverse itself and go with pretty much above average anomalies all the way out through August 22nd, which would suppress tropical cyclone activity. However, I will caution that the GFS has been unrealistic in, in basically keeping the uh, rising air over the East Pacific with sinking air over the Atlantic. And we can see that there's a major discrepancy on the Euro. We basically go into these negative anomalies and we stay in those negative anomalies, which basically supports the idea for enhanced tropical cyclone activity in the tropical Atlantic, lower than average pressures across the MDR, more warming and thus the potential for more tropical waves to develop into tropical cyclones. And I'm more inclined to believe the Euro because it's handled the propagation dynamics a lot better. So it's a very, it's very complex, but kind of bear with me in that regard. So it seems like that we're going to have this kind of dead phase for a little bit longer. But then once we start getting into early August, early to mid August, things are going to start to ramp up in a pretty substantial way. And I think at that point, we're going to start to see more enhanced tropical cyclone activity. And tomorrow's video, we'll be talking about what to expect for the Caribbean for the remainder of the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season. All right. So that being said, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.